In this series of training videos on system actions, we are gonna look at the very glue that will make your Skyhawk controller more than just ordinary button pushes executing actions. But if you wanna build something that is really versatile, you need system actions to manage your controller in different ways. So system actions are always present on your controller. They do not depend on any device core. So if you look at the C20 we have right here, you'll see that we have a video hub uh, device core installed. And if we look at the actions available to any of the interface component, we find video hub actions as well as system actions. And those are the ones we are gonna look at in this training video. So one very important document would be the PDF file, the manual for the system actions. And that looks something like this. So you need this document on your side when you want to dive into all the details that I cannot cover in these training videos. And um, they are basically listed like this. In another video, I'll um, spend more time explaining what binary triggers and pulse inputs and analog inputs are. Uh, for now, we just need to know this document exists and then lean back and enjoy the presentation. On the C20, you see four buttons with labels in displays. These buttons will select input one, two, three, and four on a video hub on output one, which is called left M, uh, M for monitor in this case. And you see the video hub control software on the screen here. So as I push these buttons, you can see um, it's confirmed that the video hub is actually changing this route. Right now, it doesn't matter what is on the video hub. We are interested in the controls, um, the control signals. So the ambition is that these buttons will not just route those four sources, but be able to route more using a shift button. And first, let's take a look at the configuration for this controller. This is the configuration for the C20 we are talking about uh, it's found on coreskahoy.com and the buttons one through four are configured like this really basic and easy to understand configuration so we want to add a shift key let's say this one is going to be our shift key so we name it shift and uh, if we save the settings we have nicely updated graphics and so on so this shift key will be assigned to a system action called shift level. And the shift level it should set is one. I also want this button to be a toggle button because what happens now if I save this to the controller is that shift level one is being set, but it could never be set back to zero, which is the default state unless I make it a hold button, a toggle button, or a cycle button, for instance. So I decided I want this to be a hold down button, like this. And I could now save and show you what happens, but let's just continue with the configuration because the way the shift level set by this button affects the rest of the controller is how we add more actions to a particular knob uh, or button, in this case, button number one. And if we select all as the divider between actions, this means that the actions above the all will be uh, executed when uh, shift level is zero in the default state and actions after will be used when uh, we are at shift level one. So my intention was to um, select output five when we are in shift level one. For the next one, I want outputs, input six routed. And on the final one, I want to see input seven. I I'm not gonna add anything to the fourth because I want you to see what happens when uh, we do not assign a particular action to another shift level. And right now, let's go to the Skahoy firmware app. It is already connected by USB to the controller. You see the USB connection next to the ethernet plug, the ethernet plug holding the power as well. So this is power over 
Ethernet enabled device. And it shows here in the Skahoy firmware updater where I can now press check for updates. And this will contact callskahoy.com and it will now generate a new firmware for the device that includes the changes we just added. So as the firmware has been written, we should see the device reboot. And we now see we have a shift key right here. So when I press this, we also see a change of the labels down here. So it now says Raspberry Pi 2, 3 and TVS PGM, which are the names for the inputs 5, 6 and 7. And we also see this is truly a hold button. When I hold it down, the shift level is set. When I release it, it's falling back to level zero. And when I press these and you look at the video hub software, you can see how the route is in fact performed when I press the buttons. So we look at the last button and we notice that whenever I am in the shift level one, this button doesn't change. It is still routing input number four to the output. And that's what happens in a configuration where you do not specify any particular action for shift levels above zero. It means that it falls back to the default. So I would like to extend this even further and suggest that we have a button that could go to shift level two. And now this button would toggle between shift level two and shift level zero. But if I choose cycle up, it will go from zero to one to two and then back to zero again. So to use the second shift level, I simply add another action, choose the shift divider, choose route input to output. And then in this case, I want input eight. And I do the same for the next two buttons, press save. And we generate a new firmware for the controller. So now the controller is rebooted. We press the shift key. And with repeated presses, you see, first of all, the display for the shift key has changed. So now it's showing us what is the shift state we are in. It's either off, it's one or it's two. And you see also how the labels for the first three buttons are changing to reflect the input source we selected, while this one is still defaulting back to the only action we gave up for this key. So let's try shift level two, and we can see confirmed that the sources we are now routing to the output um, are the ones that we selected in shift level two, and we can go back to zero. So this is how shift level works on the most basic level.